from me, Romy Stach, and welcome to Derech Eretz, The Way of the World. In today's show, we explore the world of art and creativity, meet theater entrepreneur Daphne Kuhn, and celebrate the members of the Umbiozo Foundation. Art and culture can be a powerful way to bring communities together. Not only do the arts provide pleasure and creative inspiration, but they also help foster dialogue and raise important issues. Rabbi David Gudzelman of the Steinhardt Foundation suggests that perhaps we should turn to the Jewish artist for guidance in asking questions of Jewish meaning. Sarah Evian elaborates further. Generally, Judaism is not really a culture of the visual arts. It, it's like the Greeks or the Romans. Judaism much more is a, a, is a book of the ear rather than something to be seen. And I suppose most of that is because God is invisible in our tradition. And so we don't have the icons and the statues and the objects that you would find in, in, in the churches, like you see the magnificent cathedrals in, in Europe and England and all that. So Judaism doesn't have that. Judaism generally finds sanctity in words that are heard rather than objects that are seen. But notwithstanding, Judaism is not indifferent to aesthetics. And we see that in the Torah when uh, the Jewish people are traveling through the desert and suddenly we are told to build a sanctuary, a mishkan. And part of the service of the sanctuary were the Kohanim, the priests, and they had to wear very specific clothing. And it says of that clothing that it needed to be adorned with honor which tells us that there is importance in beauty. And so we see with the Mishkan that 13 chapters are devoted to actually making the Mishkan. That is a lot of words in the Torah devoted to one thing because the Torah is very precise. And if you look at the creation of the world, which God makes from nothing into something, there's only one chapter. We see from this that all the detail is very important. And we know that the sanctuary, the Mishkan, was very, very beautiful. It was a place of enormous beauty. And in fact, God's presence rested within it. So the beauty was very important as the vessel for this. And what that tells us is that beauty and art is, is very important for spirituality. And there's a beautiful Hasidic saying which says, that um, the purpose of a vessel is to fill it, but it is in the making of the vessel that is it's that life's most challenging thing and the most revolutionary achievement. And we see from this in the making of the Mishkan that all the 13 verses are actually in how we had to make it and not what we had to use it for. So the making, the artistry is very, very important. And we see that Betzalel, the person who was given the main artist in making the, the uh, sanctuary, he was the head artist, his name, Betzalel, actually means in the shadow of God. What this means is that art is the shadow cast by the radiance of God, the infinite light that suffuses all things. It's a very, very beautiful thing that that's what art is. And it means that every piece of art really is a revelation of some aspect of the divine. So because of that, because of this, the artist has to have some sense of humility because there's this channeling that's going through. But Salel was a channel for the art that was coming from the divine. And all of us are this. So because we are all created in the image of God, we all have something to express. And each of us is an agent of God. So our soul comes down with a specific mission here on earth. And we, we need to express ourselves in whichever way we have talents in order for us to fulfill our mission and also for the whole universe to benefit from that. But there needs to be humility in that, that we, we need to know that what we are expressing is we are expressing something beyond ourselves, that we are a channel for something above and beyond.
When Jason Wolfe's parents immigrated to America, little did he know that he would one day return to his roots and develop the Umbiozo Foundation. Umbiozo is an umbrella youth development organization uniting and servicing 18 community-based traditional song and dance troops across Cape Town's townships. By using music and dance, the foundation transforms troops into sustainable agents of youth development, a cause for celebration. My parents, who are South Africans, left South Africa for the States in 1991, and I was born in 93. My sister was already born um, here in South Africa, and we basically have maintained a link to South Africa through uh, my grandparents. I'm fortunate that they, you know, were of an economic background and had the motivation to, to bring me back to South Africa throughout my upbringing and expose me to my family's history and sort of engage with, um, with justice and injustice in a tangible way. Um, but it was my mom who really spurred me on to um, get involved in, vo in volunteering and really was the one spurring me on to start Umbiozo Foundation. In 2011, my mom spurred me on to produce a DVD um, for the troops that you see busking in Cape Town and um, have other gigs around Cape Town so that they could you know, derive more financial benefit from their talents and their, their work they're doing. What I found was that I had connected all of these troops that prior to had not been connected. And I saw opportunities for troops to be able to exchange skills and be able to sort of have a solidarity and, and sort of have each other's back and, and keep each other's hope alive. We met with Jason last year and she asked us to join on Umbiozo group. So we joined to Umbiozo and we go to Cape Town to Basque also. And they were trying to help us to, to, to find what we don't have. We, it was it was nice to to be connected with him because he take us to other places and the Otterfront, mm -hmm. uh, Cape Town, and Kailicha. We meet other troops that we don't know. I want all the troops to sort of take ownership of of the development of their troops and of their kids um, and start to find a commonality and a, a centerpiece to work around through Umbiozo. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a collective, it's an umbrella. It's um, something that they can unite around um, and, a, and a common cause. So a lot of these troops do have various different motivations. You know, some are more aligned to cultural preservation. Some are just trying to prevent kids from uh, being on the streets. Some are trying to get famous and be more like a band that um, gets to travel overseas and so forth. But at the end, I think the lowest common denominator is that they care about the kids and they want the best for the kids' lives in the end. So I'm trying to let them see past their various differences and their approaches and, and sort of be complementary. One of my intentions when I was afforded the opportunity um, to be in South Africa for a year and a half in the middle of my undergraduate degree was that I wanted to get closer to the beneficiaries of the foundation and start to understand their lives in a little more of a 360 degree angle. And I was in the townships for the majority of the week for an entire year. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good experience and get to learn, learn a lot um, about how people go about their worlds and how they survive day to day. Tikale lomse benzi wokogelela babantu anangobonba ingakinins 
umlo abanya bayi sekolwe na bayi ngapo pumes sekolwe nbati sa tabo nuko timanti sonde ze ababantu ana ba kokelele kenda wonye ukwenze la ukoko baba benda wonye baba no bunye baza ne tiba fundi sa utando no monde no kwaza na ukuze banga mane besilwa estratui baba la pemkulwe nge ba pasa misega kuinduze ni zasifana ne drugs no chala na kuinduze ni zinduze wrong. Everything that happens in the streets around our um, our community, um, like drugs, drinking, and all the stabbing gangsters and machine. So I started joining the group just to protect myself out of the world. Because of uh, drug substance abuse around our area and the gangsterism, so by running this organization, we eliminate uh, the rate of that in our community and uh, teenage pregnancy. So after school, we know they are here. Um, and, and the parents know they are safe with us. What we do in this organization, we do dance, Kosa, uh, uh, Kosa dance, um, Kenzo. We sing, we do poetry, we do a drama. Uh, we are members of our uh, 70. Most of our members are still in school from age seven years old. She's the last, uh, uh, she's the youngest person in our organization and I'm the oldest. Social change is the gaps in our society that aren't fulfilled by the economy. How can we take what we have as assets in terms of our skills and also be at the same table as charities and be at the same table as businessmen that want to kind of turn it into more sustainable change in a, lo in a long, long way, but basically to fill the gaps that the economy is not, is not meeting. What gives me hope? I'm a believer. This is what I always tell them. That if you believe with God, nothing can stop us. You understand? That's what gives me hope. I'm a believer that anything can happen. He's a friendly person and he respects others and their views. And he takes uh, uh, our business, our organization very respectfully. And our, um, our friendship is just something else. Derek Eretz to me is love. Um, I think to acknowledge how interconnected the world is and how we are nourished and how we have an obligation to nourish is is so central and i think love is really the sort of at the kernel of that contribution that you make and you receive um, from everything around you um, you know to even respond to adversity um, with that sort of heart it's just it just clicks. It just um, makes sense to to have that sort of good intention that um, wants the best for what's around oneself and also for oneself, even even firstly for oneself, because you're not going to be able to con contribute to your environment and the people around you and your built environment if you personally are not giving yourself a love and enough care. Um, so, yeah, Derek Eretz to me is, is love, self-love and love for love everyone around you and everything around you. Daphne Kuhn is the founder and director of the Theatre on the Square, which is located in Santon's Nelson Mandela Square. Daphne's dream was to create a place for artists to express themselves and for audiences to come and enjoy themselves. Since launching the theatre in 1994, Kuhn has helped produce and promote over 1,300 productions, many of which have won some of South Africa's most prestigious theatre awards. My love of the theatre was inculcated and encouraged by my parents who always took us to all the shows, whether they were in Pretoria or Johannesburg. But my mother particularly encouraged me 
with my drama and the speech festivals and children's theatre and of course music. And I just took it a step further. I'd always seemed to excel, this is what I love, this is what I wanted to do. And I always tell young people when they come to me, and I mentor many, that you must do what you love most and you will do well. There's so many aspects of this particular career. And so I pursued my love of theatre. Daphne Kuhn is like this little Joburg theatre angel when it's the most unlikely that someone will be able to do something or get something together or keep something going forever, Daphne manages to do that. She's successfully managed to run a fiercely independent, gorgeous, live theatre venue in Johannesburg for so many years. And she remains committed, even though it becomes deeply challenging year in and year out. And she never loses her devotion. So she's she's literally a theatre, she's the theatre angel of Joburg. I'm from Pretoria and the Pretoria Jewish community was very much part of my youth. I belong to a lot of Jewish clubs, um, Habonim, um, cultural clubs and I used to perform of course. I was a little actress and everybody used to support me. But here in Johannesburg, the Jewish community have been also very supportive of my work. Many of our members of the theatre club are Jewish and we do a huge amount for the Jewish community inspired by the Pretoria Jewish community that, that I came from. Her framework is always, will an audience come? And She's, she has to take enormous risks sometimes and you can never tell what an audience is going to want to see. And Daphne, is she's like a trailblazer because she sees the potential in people, she sees the potential in texts, she sees the potential in the music she, and she loves it. So I think, I think she loves it all, which definitely shows in the variety of work that she puts on. Why I was prompted to um, open my own theatre because I'd worked with all the different theatre organisations and children's theatres, including the Market Theatre and the Civic Theatre and for SABC Television. And I believed that I could create something that would benefit the public in every possible way. And I had ideas to create and provide a hub in the heart of Santon. I was very passionate about the theatre, but more, more importantly, that I would be able to be in control now myself. She's a theatre personality who almost can't see life without theatre and what it brings. And she's also a catalyst. So she's, she's a doer. And the other thing that obviously comes to mind is that she is a Jewish mother. So Daphne looks after the entire theatrical community of Johannesburg as if she was a mom, a Jewish mom. This theatre is known for giving opportunities to young people. As you may know, for many years, we held, we held theatre workshops for young people, for children. We still do lots of programmes. And also in terms of actors, I give them an opportunity. A number of spaces I plan during the year are to promote new works by new writers in South Africa, new playwrights and new actors, new designers, and new technicians. And it's very important that we promote the work of young people because they are our future, of course, future in the country and future in the industry. To incorporate South African plays is of course very important to me because plays are immediate and they mirror the situations happening in our country. So whether they're social or political, it's very important for us to present new South African works. And I've worked with the most wonderful playwrights in South Africa, from Ethel Fugard to Paul de Sablepsi, and so many other local plays. So it's very important to do something that sometimes is a bit close to the bone for the audiences. They sometimes don't always like to see themselves in the situations in which we present, but it is very important for us. This last production that I did, um, I was the director of a play called From Kusistas to Knedlach, which is about a coloured girl from the Cape Flats who falls in love with and marries a Jewish boy from Joburg. And just before we opened, Daphne took me aside and she said to me, Megan, I know that you're a reluctant Jew and that you generally feel uncomfortable about that kind of stuff, but 
is this show going to be okay with the conservative Jewish community? And I absolutely loved her for it because she was really, she was being so kind about the possibility that there would be people who would be critical about it. And she taught me such a valuable lesson because I'm usually quite sort of hardcore about where I stand in situations like that. And she opened such a gentle door for me and allowed me to look at the stuff with such an empathetic eye. She allowed me to completely change the tone of the work that I was doing and my work became so much more generous. It is difficult for artists to get the recognition that they deserve and certainly for theatres as well. Um, because in the industry, unless it's supported well by the audience, you know, there is no money in it to, you know, to offer great salaries. But I must say that within our enormous theatre industry and entertainment industry, we have wonderful, passionate people who put performing and interpreting roles and above everything else. They are inspiring and inspired. And I, that's probably what encourages me to continue. And we also find that so many of the media um, don't always support theater enough, you know, on the humane aspect, the human aspect of the theater and entertainment and how much it uplifts people culturally, certainly, and, and educates people and spiritually uplifts at the same time. And it's glorious. There's nothing nicer than the coming to a live performance. And how can you imagine a world, I certainly can't, without art and music and dance and drama, of course. Um, and so it has always been my passion to uplift the community through the arts and through culture. I don't know if it's fair to say that, that Daphne has revived um, a love of theatre in her audiences, but I think what she's done is that she has kept it going. In what can be a naive belief that without theatre, we don't have a city, we don't have a country, we don't have a culture. Derech Eretz, to me it means enlightenment, opening people's mind, being a good soul, presenting things that make them civilised human beings, and I believe that I have tried to do this through the medium of theatre, presenting stories that reflect on our lives and teach people a lesson. And we've done so many wonderful works that have uplifted so many people. And I think that is my contribution to be a decent human being through entertainment and the arts. Philanthropist Victor Pinchuk of the Victor Pinchuk Foundation said, Art, freedom and creativity will change society faster than politics. If you have missed any of our past episodes of Derech Eretz, you will be able to watch them on our Derech Eretz Connect YouTube channel. From me, Romy Stach and the Derech Eretz team, remember, creativity is the key to success. Open the door and fly. Music